By the end of this video, you should have a good grasp on what multi-threading is and the basics for implementing it in Java. You should also be able to distinguish when to use it and when to avoid it and make synchronized code instead. Howdy hackers and homies, welcome to A Hot Cup of Java. I'm your host, Lexi, a full stack engineer with specialty in Java. Today, we're going to talk about multi-threading, a way to leverage your resources and make fast code by multitasking. Multi-threading, put simply, means to create extra processes that will run at the same time as the rest of your code. This sort of design is called parallelism because, as you might guess, you're running processes in parallel. Along with this comes synchronization, which is the term we use to describe code that cannot be run by multiple threads at the same time. You can see examples of this all over the place, especially in a workplace. While you might have salespeople making phone calls, you got other folks updating your inventory, accountants tracking the numbers, secretaries managing calendars, all sorts of other people doing all kinds of jobs at the same time. In this example, every employee would be a separate thread going about their own process. For synchronization, imagine the office only has one printer that everyone has to share. That printer can only be used by one person at a time, so anyone else that needs to use it will have to wait in line. This is just like how a thread might have to wait before it can run any synchronized code. Now that we've covered the basics, I have a little quiz for you to see how it's applied. Among these situations, which would make sense to use multi-threading and how would we go about it? Hashing a password and checking it with the database? Calculating payroll for all of the employees at a business. And sending out an email notification to all customers of a business. Now, keep your answers in mind as we go through some code and look at how it's done. So this time, I actually have a fairly slow program, but a full program um, already completely built out. Uh, so... To start out, we have our main method here, and it's just calling this measure operation time with a runnable, and that runnable being this method here. So all measure operation time is doing is sort of labeling what operation we're running, and then at the end of it, it's printing out how long it took in milliseconds. Um, so currently it's doing it with the current linear application, which does take a little while. So I'm going to get it going while we go over what the code's actually doing. So we have this API guru that we create. This is another class that I made and it takes a file name. So this is where we're ultimately going to end up storing the results of this program. And then we have a list of providers that we get from the guru. And this makes an API call um, that we can look at here. So it makes a request to providers endpoint. And then it converts the data into a nice list of strings. So the data actually looks like this. Um, so what we're actually pulling is we're just kind of cleaning this up so that we just have a list of strings like this. No quotes, no commas, no, nothing like that. Um, and then it's just creating a list of all of these providers. And so that's the list we're getting in the get API providers. And then we go through each one and we store their services. So what this is doing is similarly making an API call to get all of the services for an individual provider. Um, we also do the regular convert. So the way this looks, uh, here's the one for eBay. Uh, it's all of the services that that API provides. And then we're going through and we're writing it to a file. And this is where the one we put in the constructor comes in. And we're just writing a line for the API and all of its services. So now that it's done, we have the file created here, API services linear. And this is just what it looks like, right? Here's that eBay one, and it has the list of all of the services. And we can also see it took just under a minute, which in terms of code time, 
that's pretty slow. Um, so we're going to see if we can speed this up with multi-threading. So the first thing I'm going to do is copy paste this uh, to make a multi-threaded version. Uh, I typically don't like copy pasting, but it is uh, going to change quite a bit. So we're just kind of getting the baseline. And we're going to change that. And then this part works here. And so what we're actually going to do is instead of calling for every provider, we're going to create a new thread. And that's going to take a runnable as well. So runnable is just a function with no parameters and no return. Um, and so what we're going to do is call guru dot store service provider and then we're just going to go ahead and start that thread now there is one problem with this system right and that is that we're writing to a file we don't want to be writing at the same time so we need to synchronize this and what this is going to do is when a thread gets to this method, it's just going to wait. Um, wait until this method is available. Only one thread can be in here running the code at, at one time. Um, and this allows us to not sort of be sort of writing over each other, right? And it'll be coherent. Uh, the threads won't go necessarily in order. Uh, some might take longer on the API call to get the services. So the end result won't be in this nice alphabetical order like this is. Um, it'll be a little bit scattered. Most likely the empty lists are going to come before a lot of the longer lists. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and change the operation we're doing. And we're just going to change this to multi-threaded. Now, the goal is we want to get under that 57,675, around about a minute. If we get under 50,000 milliseconds, that's, that's pretty decent, but I think we can probably get under 30. So this is pretty basic. We've got our multi-threading. We've synchronized what we need to. Um, so let's give it a run. And it's running, and oh, this might be sort of the first issue we see, right? The program is still running. We haven't seen it exit, and that's the second issue. Um, so the timer said it was done before it was finished, and we see a lot of this problem. Now, what is this problem? An existing connection was forcibly closed by the remote host. And that would be this, API Guru, the, the host website that we're pulling this data from, uh, closed our connections on us. So we need to maybe refactor this a little bit. If we look, we did make some progress. And in that short amount of time that it ran, it's, it's pretty decent progress, right? We got pretty far. Um, so let's refactor things a little bit. The first thing I want to resolve is that we have this issue, right, where it claimed the operation was done, but it wasn't. Now, this is a big gotcha that happens with multi-threading, and one of the problems is this main thread where we're running this application is just starting threads. Once it's done starting threads, this function is done, right? We, we don't have anything more to do here, so then it goes on to print out the end. But those threads are still running. So we need this function to not finish until all of the threads are finished running. Now, the way we do that is we create a list of threads. And let's just make it an array list. And then as we create a thread, 
we're going, oh, my bad, threads, add, we're going to add the thread to this list. And then once all of the threads are started, we're going to go through each thread, right? And we're going to do something called joining. Now, when we join to a thread, we're taking the current one that we're on. It does throw an interrupted exception, so I should want to try catch with that. Um, so it takes the current thread that we're on, and it says, wait until this thread is finished. So then, after all of the threads are started, we'll go through all of the threads again, and we won't be able to complete this function call until every thread is complete. And then, let me just do a print stack trace. I don't expect to run into an interrupted exception. So this should solve the problem with the timer showing up too early, right? This won't stop. So we won't leave this function and call the application done until all of the threads are done. Now we have the other problem of the API isn't handling that many requests. Uh, it's telling us no. It's closing all of the connections once we get too far because we're doing too many at the same time. Now, I wouldn't say the solution would be to synchronize the store services method. Um, that's going a little far because what that's going to do is it's going to cause everything to wait in line right away and almost eliminate multi-threading altogether. Not entirely because we'll get into the situation that while a thread is writing to the file, the next thread in line Oh, no, because this is synchronized. So it won't be able to do that if we synchronize this anyway. Um, so instead, what we're actually going to do is we're going to sort of copy the structure happening here, but we're going to do it by groups. So we're going to take all of our providers, and we're going to make them into smaller chunks. And then in each thread, we'll iterate through those chunks. And this will make it so that those can um, sort of each chunk can move in conjunction, but then they will be moving linearly within. So it, it'll probably make more sense if I just type it out here. So we're going to make a map of string to list of strings. And this is going to ma manage our chunks. right? And then we're going to do providers. Let's just go by first care, right? And then we can take providers and we stream. And then let's collect by grouping. And we'll take a P and P dot substring. And we're going to do 0, 1. So it's just going to take the first character of the name of the provider. And then it's going to create a group for that. And then instead of this, we're going to take a list of string and do provider group in providers by first care dot values. So this is going to iterate through all of the values in our map and go through all of the groups. Now, in the thread, we do have to change how we implement it. So for p and string p provider in provider group, we are going to do guru.storeServices provider. So it's a little bit of linear. It's a little bit of multi-threading. Um, really, we're just trying to go a little bit easy on the API here. So we're doing linear, but we're doing linear in smaller chunks. And then all of those chunks are going to be at the same time. Um, just kind of lowering the amount that we're doing simultaneously. And remember, we're just trying to get it decently under a minute here.
So let's go ahead and delete the file as we have it. And then let's try it again. And now you see we've already fixed the timing issue, right? It's not telling us early that it's all done because we have the join. And it should finish up probably any moment now. It's still a little bit slow, but probably not as slow as it could be. And would you look at that? We're at 29,000 milliseconds, so under 30 seconds. We, it was around 57,000, so not completely in half, but, you know, if you round up, it's pretty much half. Um, we split it from just under a minute to just under 30 seconds. Um, and there, there's probably some finer grain grouping that we could have applied here. This is a pretty simplistic implementation, but ultimately, Cutting the processing time in half is pretty decent, and there's only there's like there's only so many characters an API can start with, right? So this also scales up quite a bit. Um, we just have to be considerate because this is a public API, and it's probably not the most robust managed. But yeah, this is how you get threads running, how you synchronize services that you don't want running in a multi-threaded context. And then finally, how you cause functions to wait on a thread to finish before they continue. And then if we just look, you can see it is out of order. Um, this was expected, but it's, uh, it's all of the data. It's all clean. There's none that got scrambled because they were trying to write at the same time. And yeah, that's multi-threading in a nutshell. And there you have it. Hopefully now you've got a pretty good idea for some of the situations we've used multi-threading and how we might go about it. Now that you've seen it in action, think back to your answers in the knowledge check. Were they spot on or would you make some changes now? As always, before you go, check out the description. The link to the code we used today is in there, along with a little bit of a challenge for you. For this challenge, I wrote out a pretty standard piece of linear code. See if you can speed it up by adding multi-threading to it. Until next time, catch you later coders.